Hey, 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 welcome to our final video for May of 2024. We are going to wrap up National Mental Health Awareness Month, National Walking Month, and Women's Health Month, all with this one video. But we are going to focus on how patriarchy and capitalism are bad for women's health, right? So yes, we're gonna walk, we're gonna pay attention to our mental health, um, we're going to get our support systems in place. We know as social workers, we are working at the intersections of everything, right? It's all connected. When we talk about person and environment, I can talk about, you know, sexism, classism, racism, all the isms, right, together. When we look at uh, the lives of women from a, a social justice standpoint, when we look at advocacy and self-advocacy, Patriarchy still exists. It was baked into the fabric of our country. When we think about capitalism and America being the place of dreams and what that American dream is, how was that dream out of place for so many, out of place, out of touch for so many women for so long and what that looks like today? Now, I did not take a part in the you know, man versus bear, right, debate, but that was a thing. And there is a reason that women chose the bear. There are so many valid reasons why women chose the bear. So I'm just going to throw a couple of things out there for you to think about. You can do with it as you choose in terms of your advocacy, in terms of your education, in terms of your connections, your relationships, maybe you're a mother to a son, all of those things work. An entrepreneur, but there's a reason that women are the fastest growing population of entrepreneurs, right? Because we're tired of being overlooked and penalized in the workplace. There is a reason that women are outpacing men in terms of education. But despite that, we still have this wage gap, right? So think about that. So baked into the fabric of this country and globally, right? This is not just an American thing, but patriarchy globally. And I'm not going to touch on religion, but anyway. So patriarchy is bad for women's health, not just our mental health, our physical health. So when we think about uh, studies, um, health, right? Everything is geared towards men. And then do a little bit of finagling, finagling and uh, shape it for women or not. Um, so think about things like the pink tax. The pink tax means a couple of things, right? It means that the things that are very specifically for women cost more. So I can buy a pink big razor and a regular men's blue, let's say blue black men's razor and the pink razor can cost more. It means that things like um, period products, which we used to call feminine hygiene products, but period products are seen as a luxury, not as a necessity. When we think about all of the industries, jobs that, that don't have paid maternity leave, when we think about the United States being one of the top Western um, countries and our uh, maternal mortality rates are disgusting still, and especially for women of color. And that doesn't change based on your education status. It does not change based on, it doesn't change much based on your education status, based on your income. Um, you get a little bit based on your um, zip code, but not enough to really move the needle far enough that women are not still dying in or shortly after childbirth. When we look at um, how depression in women is diagnosed or overlooked, when we look at things like heart disease and how women's heart disease symptoms are different from men's, but we have been taught to recognize heart attacks in the ways that it traditionally shows up for men. We know that women are often um, not believed or that their symptoms are blamed on things like weight when it could definitely be something more dangerous. 
um, and more serious in terms of how the medical field deals with and cares for or not women in general. Um, when we think about puberty and we think about those childbearing years, and then we think about perimenopause, which we didn't even know about perimenopause 10, 15 years ago, and menopause and how little we all know about what is happening to our bodies. Um, grandma couldn't tell you, auntie couldn't tell you because they didn't know either. And there are things like brain fog, um, that no one talked to us about. We thought menopause was um, night sweats, right? Women have so many different symptoms and I'm so glad that so many celebrities who have a different platform are now talking about it. I'm glad that social media, there are menopause experts showing up on social media so women can get their questions answered and not feel crazy and not feel alone in the ways that we need when our healthcare system is not addressing those things. So um, Halle Berry, right? Niecy Nash, um, Tabitha Brown, uh, just three of the black celebrities in particular, who, something landed on me, who um, have led the charge about we need more research and more information about women's health when it comes to perimenopause and menopause because we just all out here winging it, right? It, it, we are out here winging it. <laughs> um, and it takes a while to find the thing that works for you. And even female doctors don't have any more information than male doctors have. And so getting to a place where we have people who specialize in something that so many people across, across the globe um, experience is insane that we are here in 2024. And that is not something that has been prioritized. We think about breast cancer. When we think, listen, because child, every time I get a mammogram, I'm like, a man created this <laughs> because a woman would not have created this, right? So there are so many things just that impact our physical health and our overall health in, in general that are um, closely linked to patriarchy. When we think about the fact that women were property, right? When we think about when women got the right to vote and then when women of color got the right to vote. So women were absolutely property of their fathers. When we talk about dowries, when we talk about father giving the bride away, there's a reason that the father gives the bride away. Um, and when we talk about the fact that, that your traditional wedding vows say that the man is going to protect, the husband is going to protect. Well, that's because they were marrying little girls. Of course you needed to protect little girls and you needed to protect little girls from other men. So how many men um, did not stop what they were doing or what they were intending to do unless they thought that a woman had a husband or a boyfriend. So there are women today who say things like, oh, my husband is in the bathroom or I'm waiting for my husband or women who are wearing fake red wedding rings because men won't take no for an answer unless they are attached to another man. And here in the United States, the women were not allowed to get credit and loans and things in their name until 70s and 80s. Think about that, right? You could be a PhD, right? But you couldn't get an apartment in your name or you, you couldn't get a business loan. You couldn't get a car in your name. That is patriarchy. And this idea of women choosing the bear instead of choosing the man is baked into centuries and centuries of patriarchy and how women have been regarded and disregarded. There are so many women now who are hyphenating their name or who are making a choice to keep their maiden name and not take their husband's name after they're married. Or I know some women who have actually decided they're not going to use their maiden name or their husband's name and they have chosen a new uh, last name for themselves saying that I am no one's property. I am me. I am attached to myself. And so the idea of feminism in general, 
right? Because we get all of these extremes. But the idea of feminism in general was about women having equal access and equal rights. It was not about downing men and hating men. Now, of course, again, like I said, we get these extremes um, on both sides of the aisle. But this idea that a woman's place is in the home, that the woman's job is just to um, be a wife and mother and take care of her husband. When we look at the 40 hour work week and the things that are required in order to, to live comfortably, right? Right here, right now. The 40 hour work week and the work, the jobs that we have today and that have been around for the last 50 years were designed for a man out today. We're designed for a man who had a wife at home taking care of all of the other home things. That's not the case anymore. But when we think about the third shift, right? So you sociologists, social workers, you know that women go to work and then they come home and they do the majority of the housework, the majority of the child care, and then the majority of the caretaking, even for other relatives. There is a reason that when we look at social work and public health and we want things to happen, the oldest daughter, right, is the person that the families or the doctors or the social workers turn to in order to get the care and the support for many, many patients or in order to get the education out there because they know that even though the oldest daughter may not be the oldest child, she may have an older brother, that the responsibilities for caretaking for parents generally falls on the daughters. It's just that. So patriarchy, no, it is not good for women's health in more ways than one. And I just threw a couple of things out there, but I will tell you this, we are not telling little boys not to go to the bathroom by themselves. We do not tell little boys to go to the bathroom in groups. When we talk about rape culture, when we talk about consent, when we talk about um, just still wages, right? There is still this salary, uh, this wage gap. When we look at uh, Women's Equal Pay Day, which we know is different for women of different races. It's not the same day of the year, but we still don't have that equal um, pay. When we talk about mansplaining things, that's bad for women's health. So it's stressful, it's annoying, it's frustrating. It is dangerous when people are misdiagnosing you or ignoring your symptoms. Um, it is um, dangerous, it's harmful, it's scary when you have a whole group of people who don't believe that your body is your own and that you don't have a right to make decisions about your body. And I'm not even just talking about laws at this point, because I'm not even going to go there. I'm talking about women who have been armed, even murdered, because they rejected someone's advances, a stranger, right? I, I didn't even touch on domestic violence, a stranger. And so when we think about toxic masculinity, when we think about patriarchy, and even capitalism, the kind of work that women have to do and the kind of sacrifices that they make, the fact that these female dominated fields generally make less than male dominated fields. And even when women enter those male dominated spaces, um, they still don't get the same kind of promotion support. The fact that the, the you know, idea that women are emotional, right? And what that means um, when all of the world wars around the world have been started by men. We know for a fact that companies and organizations that are led by women do better for a variety of reasons. But yet and still we look down on these traditionally feminine or female traits that make women great leaders. You trust someone to lead in your home, but not in your company. That's not logical. So again, I am not putting my views out there in terms of um, lots of things. I'm just giving you some things to think about and saying patriarchy in general is bad for women's health. Capitalism in general 
is bad for women's health because we do not have the same access and opportunities, right? I'm going to leave you with this before I go because the sun is doing what the sun does. There have been very concerted efforts in terms of capitalism to under undermine women. And I'm going to give you two examples before I head on out. One is the idea that breast milk was not best and that infant formula was best. And there was money, millions of dollars thrown behind this campaign. And people knew it was not true. Um, and so babies were um, malnourished and women were guilted. And now we are where we are today, where we're trying to now reverse these things and say, no, breast milk is best. And if you can't produce, we now have milk banks. We have all of these other things. And there, of course, are babies that um, have special needs and need formula. We can talk about, you know, a woman not having a safe place to pump at work another issue. Um, but there was a concerted effort against women. When we think about midwives and how they were pushed out of the birthing process by obstetrics and gynecology that limited women's interests, not just women of color, but all women from entering the field for decades and decades. It was a concerted effort to push women out of the birthing process and not necessarily to our advantage as we see now when we see more doulas and we see more midwives in that resurgence and returning to women who are um, taking control of their birthing process. When we think about, um, there used to be TV dinners, right? And now women are being blamed for not being able to cook and obesity and all these things, but there were very concerted efforts to um, promote fast food and to promote TV dinners for convenience, microwaves. All of those things were about capitalism. They were not about making women's lives easier. They were not about convenience. They were about dollars. So when I say that patriarchy and capitalism are bad for women's health. They're bad for women's health. Who do you think made all of those hair care products? They weren't women. <laughs> they were not women. These huge companies are not owned by women. And so the fact that we know that these relaxers cause all kinds of health issues and cancers, but capitalism. For my black women, our naturalistas, Right. As soon as we started taking control and saying, I'm going to love, treat well, adore my natural hair. All of these companies now want to jump into the natural hair care industry, not because they care, but because their profits were going down. So they're not concerned about women's health or the women's uh, healthy hair. They are concerned about capitalism and dollars. So capital. Capitalism and patriarchy are bad for women's health. I could go on and on and on about all of the ways that it is bad, but just know for sure that capitalism and patriarchy are bad for women's health. And there is a lot that we can do, but I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what it is that you want to get involved in and what you want to do for you. So this is Nikki Sanders with Nikki Sanders Leadership Consulting. Please subscribe, share, like, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts, what you want to hear more about. And find me here, More Than Social Work with Nikki Sanders on YouTube, Nikki Sanders CEO on social media, NikkiSanders.com, and Nikki Sanders MSW on LinkedIn. And we will keep talking about More Than Social Work. See you next time. Bye.